Um, you know how you could just know too much about a person? Uh, against your will or voluntarily? That. <laughs> that. Yeah. But like the other day I just was scrolling past a really cute video of two celebrities doing karaoke and I was like oh my gosh they're so cute and then like I really like her and I really like her and then like you know you do the calculus real quick have they done anything questionable stupid that I don't like hmm and like four whole days later I was like oh she did Hmm. I just remembered that this lady who I think is totally cute went on national television and said that she doesn't wash her hands after she takes a shit because she's in her own house Just because you're in your own house just means you, what, you can't get poop on your hands? Girl. I don't understand. Dude. She went on to, you know what, now I have to Google it. Because now I have to see, make sure that I'm remembering it right and I'm doing a service by her by not saying her name. But she did go on national television and say that she... How did that even come up in conversation? It, 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 it's it's a it's a it's a I don't know. It it, <laughs> like, it was a conversation on a talk show. What would you have been talking about to all of a sudden just be like, you know what? After I take a dump, I don't wash my hands, she and then I go. Revealed that, <laughs> she recently revealed that she doesn't wash her hands after using the bathroom in her own home, insisting that because she's not going anywhere. The task is unnecessary. Uh, I'm sorry. Are you going to go cook a meal? You going to touch your face? Touch a doorknob? That's just like doo-doo crystals all over your house. (laughs) Yuck. Because she's so cute. And I was like, oh, she can actually sing. She minds her business. I don't ever know nothing about her. And then it just hit. I literally peed then i got up i washed my hands and in my headset and this is like the 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 train of thinking washed my hands and in my headset i love washing my hands like that's actually one of my like, little <laughs> joys of each day i like the feeling of fresh clean hands i like the smell effervescing off my hands you know yeah. i like spraying my hands with my personi fucking um hand sanitizer after and then going and like air drying it like there's a thing i I like washing my hands yeah and i don't know what happened but i was just like oh yeah i remember that she said she didn't wash her hands that's crazy and it's like technically that shouldn't be a strike because i technically shouldn't even know that about her but that's just goes to show you that the internet and the television just has everybody out here oversharing. But then I am thankful that she said that because now I know, should we ever cross paths, you know, she's getting that elbow bump. <laughs> but like, I mean, all that to say, yeah, there's, there, there's a way to know too much about people and to limit that, you know, People should just stop sh- Celebrities specifically should not be sharing things on the internet. You know, I posted a comment on one of the Reddit boards that I follow the other day because this internet personality was like, she's she's known for posting millions of stories every single day, and it is about the most mundane shit. Like, literally the slide that they grabbed from her story was her sitting in her car because her child now will only nap in the car so she just sits in the driveway while the child naps in the car. I was like, who cares? What how are people turning this dumb shit into content 
that people actually like there's this other girl and all she does I swear to god is eat take out drink diet cokes from Chick-fil-A and like not parent her children that's all she does and that's the that's the story every single day and she has over a million followers and I'm just like and she she's constantly telling us about how she has to use these poop pills because she can't poop and well bitch you eat shit right every day (laughs) but I'm just like I don't need to know about the fact that you can't poop I I don't care. And the only reason I know is because I like to follow these snark pages on Reddit. <laughs> but why do we right, feel... But the, but, but the snark pages make you feel normal and make you feel not alone because you're watching this shit like, really? Is this happening? Am I the only one that's seeing this? Do you yes. not see how crazy is it? Uh, is, is this crazy? And that's how I feel too. And I, that's when I'm like, I really think that I'm... I've, I've come to the end of the road here <laughs> with the internet. I, I've had All such a loving, we've come for real, uh, to, to the, the end, end of, of the road. Still, I can't. I, I actually can't let go. I'm still looking at the shit. I say it every day. I go, I've outgrown this. I should not yeah. be looking at this. This is completely uninteresting. <laughs> I don't need advice from any of you people because all of you people giving advice on this particular platform are also definitely very sad. Um, oh, I love. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like I have, I have trust always. issues. Yeah. Oh, the comments is where life is happening. Um, but like, I am really starting to wonder about what it says about me that I find this level of consumption entertaining or necessary or um, uh, it's impulsive. Like you just, you have to do it. You're doing yeah. it. And then while you're doing it, you're like, this is dumb. You know right. it's dumb. <laughs> yeah, like you want to go check in and see what dumb fucking thing they've chosen to show today. And even though I'm like, I know this is going to be the same thing and I'm going to walk away feeling like full of rage and, you know, stabby, I still have to go. <laughs> it's like a car and it's like, a car wreck. I can't look away. And the thing is, I'm not even looking at crazy. Th- like, Justin will sometimes send me a link and I'll be like, you know, it's a reflection of you that that comes in your feed. That's weird. Don't send me that. <laughs> Don't send me that. Why are you looking at that? Why are you looking? How did that come in your feed? (laughs) You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, but then I'm also like, why should I feel bad that he looked at that? Because that person made that fucking video, though. They made that video to be looked at. So they chose to be a spectacle. But did they, or maybe they're not a spectacle. Maybe they chose it because they want to go look at us. And I'm just like, I mean, okay, girl. Cool. (laughs) But also, what just happened? Yeah. And so I'm at this place where I'm just like, I have curated my Explore page to just be high fashion. Uh Uh-huh. And then every now and again, you know, a Kardashian sleeps in and then I go, not interested, not interested, (laughs) not interested. But like... The algorithm doesn't learn. You have to beat its ass every day. You have to go, didn't yeah. I just tell you not to send me that? Didn't I yep. just tell you don't show me that shit? And yeah, it keeps I wish showing there it was to me. A better way. Like, um, you know, if if the algorithm could understand your preferences and maybe instead of just like not showing it to you at all, it's just like the blurred, like sensitive warning picture you know so that if you want to click on it you can to actually find out what's going on but otherwise it's just like pixels i would like the whole screen to be blurred and then i just it's a lottery <laughs> with, <laughs> Russian you know, roulette. Like, just woo, what's it gonna do me today and then i can get my little fix for 10 minutes and then i can go back to doing what matters in life which is monkey pox Books, <laughs> laundry, um, feeding children, parenting, you know, yeah. <laughs> but like, I can't, I can't take it. I can't take another day of Jennifer Lopez in a nice dress. <laughs> I can't take another day of it. I said, don't show me it again. And it keeps showing it to me. 
I don't care. Pete yeah. Davidson had a contract. Oh, God. Stop I it. I know. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. Also, <laughs> I don't know why the algorithm thinks that I want to watch Northwest grow up. I don't. I've told you several <laughs> times. I'm not interested. In 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 her, I th- I love. I think she's good for you, Candy. Yeah. You won a double lottery. <laughs> but I don't care. Why are you showing it to me? All right, I know. And it's and it's every d- and then every now and again it'll show me you know those really ugly shoes that have like the horse's hoof toe. Why? Uh-huh. Are you- I'm offended by this. Why do you think I want to see that shoe? I said high fashion and I get that. And those big Dumbo Balenciaga shoes. Why yeah. are you showing me that? <laughs> what part of what I've clicked on said to you? Yeah, this bitch would buy these dumb clown shoes. I don't. Yet you could just say something off the cuff. And the next time you get on your phone, you have 15 targeted ads for that exact specific thing. Like how Correct. can it do that? But it can't do the other. Correct. So the other day I had to go on Staples and buy supplies and the next thing you know I'm I'm in this vortex of like all the things you can do with paper clips. What? <laughs> yeah. And I really do think that it is it is damaging to my brain because now I also get just a barrage of do you have ADHD? And I'm like you you're making me have it. <laughs> if I didn't have it, I have it now because now I'm looking at this fucking wall of uh, I don't know what I'm looking at. Some lady fucking p- laid out a bunch of M and M's and then threw them in the sky and took a fucking p- quick, quick picture. <gasps> yeah, the M and M's became SpongeBob those. SquarePants or something, <laughs> and I'm like, what just happened? I think those are so cool, but I can't help but watch it and also be like, who has to clean that up? Why do we do this inside? Why are we wasting all that food? <laughs> yeah, it's um, the Internet's a wild, wild place. And I, the more that I spend time on it, I feel like the less that I want of it. I went through and finally, after last year, clearing off all of my friends and all of my follows on Facebook, I sat on that account for a year and last weekend had Chris help me to delete it, deactivate it. It's gone. I've had that fucking thing since 2004, 2005, like when you could only get Facebook if you had a college email address. Yeah. So and I I got lucky. I got lucky. I never got sucked into Facebook and I also just never thought it was user friendly. I thought I, I didn't like that. But yeah. After Barack Obama became president and I got to see everybody's racist ass opinions. And I was like, <laughs> wow, I'm going to end up not liking any fucking body. Yeah. <laughs> any fucking body. So I said, I can't yeah. be here. I can't be here. Yeah. And then everybody's like, well, how are you going to find out about a kid's class? How are you going to find out about if school's closed and this and that? And I'm like, you're going to fucking tell me. What the fuck? That's, <laughs> I was just going to say, that's the most frustrating thing is that there are so many. Like uh, my school, the kids' schools all have like grade specific moms groups, and then there's neighborhood moms groups. And I do miss that part of it. Um, But at the same time, I'm like, it's not worth it. I just, it's not. I've never been out. And the only reason why I joined temporarily was so that when COVID happened, I could find out what the precautions were going to be in the classrooms and this and that. And I became a homeschooling mom, so I needed to know. You know, when to go pick up the fucking computer, when to go do this and when to go do that, because I'm also terrible at email. Um, Luckily for me, a mom who's on top of that shit was also homeschooling at the time, so there wasn't really a reason that I needed to go on it. And then one day, and all it took was one day, one day someone said the wrong shit, and I was like, oh, no, you don't, dog flag sunglasses, Avi. No, the fuck you don't. (laughs) And then... (laughs) I spent literally four hours cussing this motherfucker out Ugh. in the mom and dad page <laughs> and cussing him out real good to the point where, you know, at the end of it, it was, look, lady, I'm not a lawyer like you are. And I was like, wow, that's how fucking stupid you are. I'm just a little old stay at home mom. And I cussed you out <laughs> so goddamn good. You thought I was on your motherfucking level in terms of education. But that's how fucking stupid you are. <laughs> Don't fucking ever come on my page again. Block. 
And I was just like, dang. And, you know, and in my mind, I was like, oh, God. So I was going to be like, dang, Maja's mom just lit the motherfucker up. Um, <laughs> that was a fucking fantastic day. And then I thought about it and I was like, yo, my heart is racing. Yes. My hands are clammy. And I literally am hoping to God, I'm like hoping I bump into this person that's just in the town. <laughs> Why, Melissa? Uh, Why? So, I don't be on there. I don't be on there. Yeah. After I cussed out one person in real life on there, I was like, oh yeah, I can't be on here. <laughs> <laughs> It was one of these things. I, I, what stressful the fuck was times. I cussing him out about? Oh, it was. Well, if you don't want, if you want your kids in a mask, then you should just do this and this and that, something like that. And I had to just release the crack. And I was like, first of all, the reason why your <laughs> child can comfortably attend school is because of the sacrifice I'm making by homeschooling mine. So, number one, say thank you. Secondly, <laughs> like I, <laughs> I was like, number two. What are you teaching your children that you don't care about the teacher's health, about the health of the immunocompromised? Like, what? Really? A mask is that is going to make you that upset? Okay. <laughs> it was bad. Oh, and then isn't it fun to go back through and see who likes the posts that you make? Like, I did one in our mom's group it, kind of around something similar and it was like really exciting to like just watch the people pile on and like like my reply and kind of the same moment I was like wow this is really mature of you Amanda oh I mean but then I saw you know motherfuckers was scared to like my shit publicly but they would privately message me like I really appreciated what you said it was very thoughtful da -da -da. and listen I wasn't I wasn't cussing in my mind I was yeah like how it sounds in my head and how I'm saying it is not how it sounds when I put it out there. When I put it out there, that shit is straight poetry. Clean. Sharp. Stank. Professional. <laughs> um, not a curse word. Nobody's getting called out their name. None of that. But I yeah. am sharp with it. Yeah. Um, so I got a lot of private messages. It's like, thank you so much. And I really needed to hear that. But, but you didn't want to like my shit. Because right. you still want to be intermingling. So what does that say about yeah. you, Susan? So, you know, I don't have friends like that. <laughs> <laughs> but after that, Justin was like, yeah, babe, you, you can't be on there. And yeah. I just stopped checking it. I just stopped checking it because I also just felt like it was just like, oh, my God. No one is paying $140 for your fucking mattress. <laughs> it's probably That's a for giant the best. ass dresser. What are you talking about? No one's I do that love the Facebook TV marketplace, set. though. I've gotten quite a few good scores off the marketplace. And, well, I, Justin has been trying to get me to do it, you know, but I'm like, that requires a stranger coming to our house, and that's not going to work for me. Oh. I, it doesn't bother me. My dad just made a killing selling a ton of his shit on marketplace, and people just, like, clamoring over each other i was shocked at the things that he was able to get rid of hold on so he just posts it and they just come at a certain time or he posts it and he has to have a conversation with them and then da, 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 da. i mean he it sounded like for some things he was fielding like seven and eight requests you know per item and so then you know people will text well i can't get it until this date can you take this money and hold it for me you know whatever like people are trying to negotiate prices and ask for information so it I mean if you've got a lot of stuff listed or you have something that people really want um you're going to be fielding a lot of messages but like I, I sold our old sectional sofa I think within 10 minutes on marketplace and the kid was like hey I want this but I can't get it until Thursday can I come look at it and I'll pay you for half of it today and then I'll bring you the rest of the money when I come and I was like yeah no problem he was buying it for his mom. So he and his mom came over, sat on the sofa, looked at it, said, I'll take it, gave me the money. And two days later, he was back in my driveway with the U-Haul. It's so nice. Yeah, I'm I, I'm glad y'all can do that. Well, you could also I meet people. Do... like At the in police a... station, dead ass, yeah. 100%. You want to meet me at the precinct? I don't yeah. know, you like that. But I also am not... 
this is what happens to me. I'll have beautiful items that technically could make a lot of money if I gave a fuck. And then I'll be like, you know what, Melissa, you have been so blessed in this life. Just put that shit outside. Don't nobody. Stop it. Stop. Just stop it. Mm -mm. I'm not, I'm not doing this with you, girl. And then I said, Justin Beck, we could sell that, man. Okay, well then you do that shit. Babe, yeah. you're so lazy. You could just go in there and, okay, well then you do it. <laughs> then you do it. If you are so attached to this Ikea mom dresser, you do it. <laughs> that shit will Otherwise, go so fast. <laughs> but I also don't like when people put furniture on the corner because it makes our neighborhood look junky. Uh-uh, put the, go take that shit around the other corner. Not on this street. <laughs> 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 I don't like that. Do you guys have like a big item pickup day? No, we have to call it in. And oh, person has okay. To come. Got you it. get in trouble. You can't have that shit down there. Yeah. Like if your gardener comes and does a big cleanup and there's uh-huh. like 40 fucking bags of leaves and debris and this and that, that can't be down there for that long. Uh-uh. You oh, better make really? an arrangement. You better call the motherfucking garbage people to come pick that up. Wow. Because they come around and they're like, ma'am. And they're like, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, they're going to come. There's no... There's no street parking. There's no mm-mm, wait. You have like a you have like a do you have an HOA or just like a neighborhood? No, we just have a bunch of, of busy bodies. Yes, neighbors with rules. <laughs> yep. And I'm one Gladys of the busybodies. That's me. <laughs> I'm like, you know what? That dresser has really been outside for a couple of days now. I don't know what she's doing in there, but that looks like it needs to be called in. I don't like. That. <laughs> I don't. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I don't. I don't like people cutting down trees. I don't like people parking in the street. You better curb your dog. (laughs) (laughs) There's someone up the street, and I hope that they don't hear this, but there's someone up the street that has an inflatable fucking sports water globe. Oh, wait. Like a a lawn decoration or like a Christmas inflatable? Yes. Oh, it's not Christmas. It's just for sports. What? And I said, sir, that is an eyesore. First of all, it's summertime. Why would there be a, a Met snow globe? Oh, weird. <laughs> I mean, to each his own. <laughs> no, but that's the whole thing. We are a community. You can't have your own. If I have to go ask to, to whether or not I can paint my house a certain color, you should have to ask. That's detritus that I don't want to see. Remove that. <laughs> <laughs> and i don't know when i got this way it's crazy it's like i turned 40 and i'm just like completely curmudgeonly <laughs> and <laughs> not having well, it <laughs> you turn 40 and all of the fucks that you had to give just magically disappear no the problem is i have too many of them i if it <laughs> listen, if I could stand the heat, I would be the person that sits out on that stoop and watches the passings and goings, and I would be like, yeah. hmm. Hmm. <laughs> you know, like, I'm the mom that's in the house dress and house slippers, I stand at the bottom of the driveway and be like, I'm sorry, do you not see the children getting on the bus? Slow the fuck down! Like, I'm that lady. Oh, I almost got, I, I, I was actually a little bit nervous for this, and I know Quinn was, because at the beginning... It must have been sometime like late fall last school year. And she catches the bus at an intersection where cars typically do not stop in the morning for whatever reason. Or they cut through our neighborhood to get to another street. So we were standing at the bus stop. It was dark outside. And this woman comes down the street and she's facing us and she just blows through the stop sign Mm. and she passes by us. And I turned around and I threw my arms out and I was like, what the fuck? She hit her brakes, reversed, and I was like, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit. No. (laughs) No. She rolled down her window. She goes, fuck you. I go, no, fuck you, motherfucker. (laughs) Quinn was like, oh my God. I said, there are children here. You did what you had to do. There are children. And then she tried to turn around. And then she tried to turn around. Well, if there's children, why don't you watch your language? Don't fucking tone police me when you were the one that was in the wrong. Yeah, there are children here and I'm protecting them. Don't fucking tell me I can't cuss you out. Do not do that. And then I I called the police department and I said, please come sit at this intersection. You guys can write a million tickets. 
because nobody ever stops here. And this is where all the kids get the bus. Listen, and that's when Blue Lives Matter. Come over here and do something. Thing, thing. 100%. <laughs> if you want to write a ticket for a motherfucker that I don't want running my kids over, that's wonderful. Do that. Right, right. Yes, I agree. But it's it's crazy how that happens. But you know what else, too, though? While you were definitely in the right, you were also playing with fire. Because I don't know. There's something going on. There's something going on. It's in the water. It's in the it's 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 in the virus. I don't know what, but it's rage and I don't like it. Oh, like mm. uh when people turn into zombies in movies and then just go on a, you know, mm-hmm. rage killing everybody. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I know. Yeah, I was Justin, definitely like, I'm gonna get shot in the face right right yep. now. <laughs> I well I tell Justin all the time, I'm like, listen, you can have that attitude and that honking and that impatience and shit on your own, but do not do it when I'm in the car with the children. Absolutely not. Because I'm not getting shot in the face because you had to honk somebody. Do not use your horn. Yeah. Do not use your horn if I'm in the car. Absolutely not. The other day he used his horn. Or something. We weren't even in the wrong, but he did something in the rear view, like, what the fuck? Yeah. And that truck stayed with us for a good stretch <gasps> of highway. And I was like, see, and I oh, could tell I he like got that. nervous, too. I could tell he got nervous, too. And I said, see what I say, what I say. I said, what's going to happen is one day, because the way we, the gun laws are set up in this country, that motherfucker's going to open fire into our motherfucking car because you tapped the brake or because you said what the fuck or whatever it yeah. is. Yeah. And I'm not doing that. I'm not getting shot in the face on account of your impatience on the road. <laughs> so. Oh, God. And it's happening. I'm telling you, there is something going on globally. Yeah. But specifically in America, because we're not that smart. We, and, we, and we've never been patient. Where we are all overwhelmed and burnt out and tired and angry and scrolling and doom scrolling. And when we're not doom scrolling, we're dumb scrolling. So yeah. that's, TM that. <laughs> Something is happening to our brains that is making us completely intolerant. And I'm not talking about intolerant in the way that's important. Of course, we have to be intolerant of bigotry and that shit. But I'm talking about intolerant yeah. of dumb shit. Yeah. Where we just grow impatient and then bad things happen. Um, so I told Justin that he, he I, I can't be in the car with him if he's going to be impatient because that's that's how you get jacked up. Mm-mm. No, ma'am. Whew. Yeah. It's scary. I was just reading um, a Reddit thread this morning while I was having my coffee and the question posted was, what would you do if there were no men on earth for 24 hours. Yes. The responses were so sad. It was mostly like walk at night, go to a bar, drink as much as I want, dance, have a good time, and then walk home. Go camping in the woods, wear a sexy outfit. I was like, dream big, guys. But, I mean, they're so right. Like, I... I can't run at night. I can't run early in the morning. Like, I don't want to go out walking by myself. If I want to go hike on one of my favorite trails, I can't wear my earbuds because I'm constantly listening. I was like, that's the saddest. And it was just like a constant, those themes over and over and over again. Yep. And then the thing, the, the worst part about it is to protect yourself from the wrong man. You have to depend on a right man. You can't even do nothing by goddamn self. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I I mean, I never want to go jogging. That's not ever going to happen. But, like, <laughs> joggers go and don't come back. That happens. I've seen so many Oh, of yeah. Those. Yeah. They say don't wear your hair in a ponytail when you go out so that you're not easy to grab. Which, who's running with their hair swaying? That's crazy. Ugh. No, I could never. But yeah, it just, I was like, well, this is a really great way to start the morning. I'm very depressed right now because I would like to do a lot of these things too, but it just will never happen. I mean, swim naked, some people said. Go out without a bra on. I was like, God, fuck. I did that today. But I also don't have no titties, so that's not a problem. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Reddit. Thank you, Alexis Ohanian. Um, 
if if you find a good pocket, yeah, where there are people that like care about grammar and that are you know thoughtful, which is crazy yeah. because you don't think that there will be a place for thoughtful discourse on something on, that anybody can use. And right, but when you can find a good pocket of stuff on Reddit. Like, that shit can be enthralling and, like, you feel like you have community in your own mind. This episode of Imperfect Strangers is brought to you by Pop Pantheon. Every Thursday, DJ Louis the Fourteenth is joined by pop critics and superfans to overanalyze all of your favorite pop stars and then rank them in the official Pop Pantheon. I am obsessed with this podcast. You know my little five Enneagram. She loves research and detail. And so if you love Imperfect Strangers, you will love Pop Pantheon. Uh, Melissa, did you catch the episodes about Diana Ross? It is a whole two-part series, specifically. Oh, (laughs) did I catch it, ma'am? Knowing (laughs) how I feel about Diana Ross, did I catch it? Of course I caught it because Diana Ross, as you know, is the mother-in-law to my favorite, Ashley Simpson, who then is related to Jessica Simpson, another one of my favorites. Hell, I even love Joe Simpson. So, yeah, (laughs) Pop Pantheon. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> is the place for me because they deep dive on all of these pieces of trivia um, interconnected. And I don't know if there's any greater piece of trivia than Diana Ross's family tree. So, yeah, <laughs> did I catch it? Yes, I did. <laughs> well, for those who are not up to speed on Pop Pantheon, shame on you. Um, but the way that it works is uh, Louis has his very cool system of seven tiers that are created to sort out the world of pop stars. From the icons, hey Brittany, all the way down to the flops. Hanson? Do you think Hanson's a flop? No! What? Hold on! Oh, so Pantheon is great for arguing time, which is one of our favorite things, but I do... I do love learning about flops, so I'm, I'm going to get into that flop catalog. Um, Pop Pantheon is incredible. <laughs> Pop Pantheon has been known to secure incredible guests, guests that are also in the Imperfect Strangers bubble. They know Jess from Hot Takes and Deep Dives. They know my personal favorite, Rich Juzwiak from Pot Psychology with Tracy Morrissey. So like, you know, it's kind of like a cute Venn diagram of all the things that we like and all the things that they like. And you know that we love research. So if you haven't listened to Pop Pantheon, now would be a time to start. And you can listen and subscribe anywhere you listen to your podcasts. For example, <clears throat> hold on, let me pull up this one. Because uh, sometimes them MI the assholes be going off. I love, love reading them. I love the responses. I, I especially enjoy, though, when people are you know found to be the asshole and then they they change the behavior they do something different and they come back it's like a really nice kind of you know finish to the story when somebody learns yeah yeah, when they're like what do you mean i'm the asshole like they really posted that shit thinking they weren't and then everybody's like no dude that was really bad and they're like what and you're like dude, (laughs) you're a horrible person i hate to tell you but that's that's for real. But then then if they go back and they like try to fix it and then they come back, I like to see the little updates and the reports of like what happened. I like it when somebody learns a lesson and is like thankful to the group. Oh, I didn't see it but that I, way. Thank you so much. I do like that, but not more than I like when a motherfucker comes back and they're defeated. <laughs> and they're like, yeah, I was. Wow. <laughs> She's leaving me. Hmm. Um, I love when they get left. Okay, hold on. Um, (laughs) (laughs) 
Because my other thing is like, your intelligence is so low. Don't get me wrong. I too am here in this forum looking at your ass, but (laughs) your level of emotional intelligence is so low that you thought you were going to put these 19 paragraphs on the fucking World Wide Web (laughs) and that everything was going to be okay, sir. Yes. That's what you thought you were going to do. Then you got ate up. Then you got ate up. And now all of a sudden it's throwaway 7642. And... (laughs) And now we're, you know, we're tweeting and deleting. Don't do that. Okay, hold on. (laughs) But I also like motherfuckers like, hold on, was this you? And then they (laughs) And then they, and you know what it is? It's like I have my whole own little, I'm just talking to the, all the voices in my head are having a great Uh conversation. (laughs) So here's one that I read. Here's one that I read today. This is absolutely bananas okay am i the asshole for returning home after i found out that my husband booked first class for him and his friend while i got economy what my husband <laughs> first of all lady you have no self-respect how are you the asshole i know you have a automatically husband problem. Off top, i haven't even read the first paragraph off top no <laughs> My is husband it a, and I, a, okay. Is it a what? I was going to say, is the friend male or female? For him and his friend. Okay, we'll find out. My husband and I, 30s, haven't been on a trip out of the country for years. While he goes every year with his best friend. His <gasps> reasons for going with him, man, is because they both go to attend sporting events. This year, my husband told me I could go with him and his friend since they were visiting a new destination. My husband told me oh, I could go with him. Oh, thank you. Thank you for taking yeah. me on this trip with you. Oh, okay. He paid He paid for my ticket and everything. Of course he did. You're his wife. The fuck? He paid for my ticket and everything. It sees him. Now, look, my heart's rate going at my heart rate. <laughs> me he paid for my ticket and everything since i'm a stay-at-home mom and have no job Uh, yes give her the gong because (laughs) what you don't know is you paid for that ticket as the stay-at-home mom because he was able to go and do all that shit and get y'all's money (laughs) because you are doing the motherfucking thing at the house but okay yes (laughs) <laughs> he paid for my ticket and everything else since I'm a stay-at-home mom and have no job. The kids were left with my mom. However, when I found out that he had booked first class for himself and his friend while I got economy, I just couldn't hold my tongue. You think? I would have lost my mind. I confronted him about it and he at first refused to discuss it. Oh, bitch. <laughs> <gasps> then when the argument got heated, got heated it started heated because <laughs> the conversation started with a fucking shoe to his head what are you talking about got heated. Yeah, definitely coming in hot <laughs> he yelled i paid for your ticket for fuck's sake isn't that enough <gasps> question mark question mark no question mark. no then kept on about how i should stop acting like i was quote unquote royalty Ah. <sighs> uh, 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 and then am if I, I not come your to wife? Th- I bitch, am royalty. I'm royalty. I'm your queen. Motherfucker, I'm your boss. Okay? <laughs> 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 and then if I come to think about it, even economy is fine for me since I technically don't work anyway. Sir! <laughs> I cried. Do you want to (laughs) die? I cried. I cried. (gasps) Oh, she cried. Did you cry because the night you realized that you were holding the knife (laughs) blade first and your hand started filling with blood? Because why were you crying, bitch? I cried because of what he said, but decided to just not go altogether. He changed his tone and started begging me to just go. With what he planned. But I declined. I went to pick the kids up from my mom's house. And he came back three hours later. Huffing and buffing about what happened. His friend sent me a text. First of all, sir. 
Why are you talking to me? Absolutely not. Why don't you go in first class with your little friend? Don't fucking text me. <laughs> His friend sent me a text calling me entitled. Wowzers! What? Whoa! His friend. But the I'm husband is also paying for the friend. Hold on a second. His husband, no, his friend sent me a text calling me entitled and said this was the reason why he didn't want my husband to take me with them. First of all, <gasps> why you, are y'all fucking? All uh, right. <laughs> <laughs> the friend wanted the husband all to himself. His friend sent me a text calling me entitled and said that this was the reason why he didn't want my husband to take me with them. And I just proved his point. I did not respond, but I blocked him since he's gotten increasingly yes. rude over the past few months. Because he's jealous, bitch. That's his yes. bussy. Oh, my he... God. And you just tried to encroach on his little vacation. Mm-hmm. <sighs> a, a sporting event. Okay, girl. He, <laughs> my husband, said I keep, I keep crying about being excluded. And this is what happens when he finally decides to include me. Am I the asshole <gasps> for not... For not settling for economy. By the way, he's perfectly capable of financing the trip. So. Uh... The first response has got 69K votes. Yeah. And a gang of prizes, which I still don't understand <laughs> what these symbols mean. But I'd just be like, yeah, girl, go. If you're a sta- <laughs> he- oh, this is exactly what I said. If you're a stay-at-home mom, then all the money he earns is shared funds. There is no him paying. In fact, you paid for his first class ticket as much as he paid for your economy ticket. The level of disrespect is astounding. Divorce him and get half (gasps) plus alimony. 100%. That's the only only proper response. That's the only proper response. Absolutely. Um, So everybody is just with her. Mm -hmm. As they should be, that would... Wow, I want to know what happened afterwards. I need to know... Did he end up buying her a first class ticket? Did she end up staying home and he went anyways? Because what was that conversation when he got back from his little trip? And now she didn't get to go. You didn't buy her the right ticket. And then you still went anyways. Yikes. She responded here. I'm a stay at home mom with three kids. Two of them are under the age for school. So I'm 24 seven with them. Even if I'm working, kids make it hard to commit to work hours. Girl, the kids are the work. The kids are the work. What are you talking about? Mm -mm. Oof. Mm -mm. See, what she the her problem is she doesn't she has allowed herself to believe that she's not an equal partner in this. Right. Right. And the second problem is why the fuck? And I'm gonna get a lot of slack for this. I know I am. But why are you going on vacation with your little friend? Why are you going on vacation with your little friend? But why aren't you? Why did you think that it was okay when you booked that ticket? Like, I know he said, well, you don't work, so you don't deserve it. But like, did he not think that at some point they were going to go get on the plane and she would wonder why they weren't sitting together? Like, what kind of relationship? I hate him anyway. But why? And, and, and why don't you talk to your friend about text? <laughs> Tell your friend don't text me ever, ever. Yes, yes, that was so rude. Yeah, these people are tripping. Because, girl, you looking the damn fool. Wait till you hear this one that I have, because... Give it to me. Am I going to be upset? (laughs) Yeah, because the rage that I was feeling in my chest was just... It's too much not to share. Not me and you doing rants in the morning. Go ahead. (laughs) (laughs) Am I the asshole for telling my boyfriend's mom that my maternity leave is not supposed to be a vacation? I'm 37 weeks pregnant now, and my boyfriend took three weeks off work to stay with me so that we can adjust to being parents to a newborn. This is my first, and I'm very nervous and really need the support right now. My boyfriend's mother took it upon herself to schedule a paternity vacation, in quotes, for my boyfriend for the last two weeks of his leave. She came over for dinner and surprised him with it. It's an all-expense-paid vacation to Italy for my boyfriend as his paternity present. (laughs) She gave me a jade-stoned bracelet and a matching newborn one for the baby, as it's part of their culture to give the family stone to the mother and child once they enter the family. That was very kind of her. However, I told her that his leave was for helping with the baby. 
She was taken aback and said that he would be with me for a week, and that was long enough. Her husband never even stayed at the hospital with her when her son was born. I told her and my boyfriend that I didn't want him to go and that she should have asked first before buying such an extraordinary gift. She left in tears because I was, quote unquote, ungrateful and ruining her son's experience. My boyfriend pretty much agrees that he should go for at least a week because she paid for it. (laughs) But I really wanted him to stay with me and bond with our daughter. Am I the asshole, sweetie? No. The fuck? Well, you actually are. Why did you have a baby with this man knowing that his mama is crazy and obsessed with him? Right? So fucking strange. Two of his three weeks, she wanted to send him to Italy for vacation. By himself? With whom? With her? With the mom? No, by himself. Man. I know. I know. By himself? Yes. I I mean, everybody was obviously like, your potential mother-in-law needs to cut the umbilical cord before you even cut the one off of your baby. You are not the asshole. You need to talk to your boyfriend. He's supposed to be there with you. Like, you messed up. And... First of all, three weeks paternity leave is amazing. Wherever he works is great because they don't be doing that. And the fact that he, you know, that he wants to take that time. I mean, this this sounds like such the lowest common denominator for like what men should want to do when their children are born. But like, I also understand that it's hard to take that much time off of work. Um, Girl, let me tell you something. Actually, I Justin Beck didn't take a minute off of work. He didn't. And couldn't. Couldn't. All three. Did you want to, like, stab him in the neck all the time? Well, you know I got control issues. He would have been in my way anyway. The only time... <laughs> the only time I, I didn't like it, but I was cool. I was cool. I was cool as fuck. Was when I brought... Sheer home... And they got to screaming in the basement. Baby, she's just, just going to lay down this track. It's going to be two hours tops. Two hours tops. 16 hours later. Um, oh, no. <laughs> I'm sitting on a wee-wee pad bleeding my brains out. I have Maja, who does not like the new baby. Oh, I have Shalom, who's sitting there like, this is not going good. This is not looking good, daddy. <laughs> oh, no. But, I mean, you know, he did what he needed to do. He was going out yeah. there and getting our money. He was getting our money. Yeah. Which was fine, and I was happy. Go get our money. Love it. Um, <laughs> but if he was out there eating pasta, <laughs> talk about bonjour mono me riding a fucking tandem bike with somebody. Right. No, right. sir. Absolutely no not. The second he got on the plane, I'm calling a locksmith. No. I need your bank account, all your credit cards. Leave me everything. Don't come back. We're done. I mean, that's crazy. Right? I And then, like, what if the baby is two weeks late? What if she has to have a cesarean and needs help, but he's already committed to leaving? Like, he can't just leave. I mean, he can't just leave in the first place, but for him to be like, yeah, well, I mean, I should at least go for a week. Okay, like, no, but no, what no, the fuck no, did no, you no, just no, do? No, no, you no. did no work. We're asking the wrong question. The question is, what if the baby? Bitch, the baby. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> the baby is here now. And I need you to go get me a drink. I need you to go fucking fill this diaper bin. I need you to go to the store. I need you to go return this. I need you to go to fucking fire station to make sure there's fucking car seats in there, right? I need you to go do some things. <laughs> One of the things I need you to do, I'm not even get, I don't even get to help. Yeah, the thing I need you to do is shut the fuck up over there and I'll let you know. <laughs> That's it. But not shut the fuck up in Italy. I mean shut the fuck up in the living room while I lay here. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You got to leave me 100%. alone, but you still got to be in proximity. Get the fuck out of right. here. Right. No. No. 
And especially for a first time mom, uh uh-uh. No. Right? No. Like by the third, you don't need that. Like you're like, boy, stop it, move. But (laughs) (laughs) I loved having Chris home. Yeah, Justin Beck was not. He came in the house. He took off that dirty shirt, put on a fresh one, yeah. washed his hands up to his elbows, and was like, what do you need me to do? And I would say, take Aww. this baby so I can take my shower, or take this baby so I can fucking sit in a, in silence, Yeah. or go get me this food now. Right. No. No. Don't take those shoes off. <laughs> I'm going to need you to go get my food. (laughs) Yeah. Well, I needed, because I had surgery for all three of them, I couldn't really do anything. I couldn't even go up and down the stairs more than once a day. So it was like I was kind of stuck. So having him home, at least for those first two weeks, especially once we had, you know, Bennett and then Lennox and needing help with wrangling all the kids, and I couldn't pick them up. I couldn't pick Bennett up. And so... It was definitely helpful, <clears throat> but he also yeah. cooks a ton. So that was my favorite part was that I was just like eating like a princess for two weeks. You should be eating like a princess every day forevermore just because did you not want these kids or? Right. <laughs> Listen, I, do you I, see I, I have carried on your family name like the mm-hmm. fuck the Strongs will continue thanks to me. What a great last name too. No, Justin Beck right? was great. I, I, Justin Beck was exactly what I needed him to be, which was where I said to be when I said it and where I said <laughs> not to be when I said it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. There were uh-huh. a couple missteps, a couple missteps, a couple. <laughs> but, you know, the, the, the one thing that I always said was I will never, ever, ever, ever get in the way of your glass jaw shit. So... He's like, no, I know you're upset, and I couldn't change the date. And I was like, don't even trip. And he's like, no, like, you're being really fucking cool. Like, is is everything okay? And I was like, no, I... (laughs) He's like, what's the hidden... (laughs) Yeah, I'm like, no, no, this is fine. I I think this is going to be a fucking fire-ass record. You're you're on a roll. Go do that. And and it was. It was a fire-ass record. It was loud as shit, but it was a fire-ass record. Um... (laughs) But no, he, he, he did what he was supposed to do. The children have fucking, you know, college savings and it's fine. But you're not going to Italy. Don't. <laughs> Absolutely not. No. I, ugh. Again, went, I need to know the follow up. I know. She's crazy. But I mean. Bananas. But the other thing here is. Which I'm also not allowed to say is. The casualness with which we have children with people. <laughs> uh, yeah. But I want to say that. I know. But. Listen, I, I was literally having this conversation recently with somebody and I used to joke, but I was also very like dead serious. I, I mean, Chris and I met before our brains were fully formed. So we were just stupid, dumb kids who loved each other and got married incredibly young. So, you know, l- like if you look at it, like the the math of it, we probably should not still be together and still liking each other the way that we do. But I'm like, I needed to date him for five years, even though I knew that I wanted to marry him. Like I felt like I needed that time. And then even after we had dated for five years and we had another like three before we tried to have kids. And so I was like, I just I needed to like break him in and understand that like this, like if we have a kid, this is forever. And I have to fucking deal with you for the rest of my life if -hmm. we have kids together. So I need to make real sure that like we can do this. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, I was like. And listen, Justin Beck was the prize. Like, I wasn't tripping. I'm, I knew, you know, very early on. I was like, oh, this motherfucker has his shit together. This motherfucker is a solid, good, loyal person. All of those things were right, but I also still needed to know a lot of things. Like, is this motherfucker crazy? You know what I'm saying? Like, 
<clears throat> well, you know, you know, like how are they? How are they under pressure? How are they when they, you know, have like to make a, an important decision, or are they going to be supportive of you? I mean, there's like so many things that go into it. Can they really truly like put others in front of themselves and like, you know, prioritize somebody else's needs over their own? It, I think it's all. You should. Feel pretty confident, I think. Oh, yeah, we had, listen, I felt very confident. We had some bumps in the road. Do not get me wrong. He is an, an eccentric person. Um, <laughs> Justin Beck? <laughs> but <laughs> I always knew he'd be a fucking great dad. Uh-huh. Because he's smart. Because he has a sense of humor. And because he has a sense of loyalty you know what i'm saying Mm -hmm. like because for me it was i'm not i'm not once we have these kids and i know that this is not the way that you know people think anymore these days everybody's very independent and all that but i'm not doing this by myself i didn't mm -mm, that's not what i signed up for bitch now yeah when we said we are gonna do this whatever it's gonna fucking take to make sure that all of the children get to a place in life with us intact, that's what we're going to do. It has to be 100%. dire motherfucking straits for us to break up. If we are yeah. going to lay down together and pay all this money to bring these people here. <laughs> right. <laughs> Forever. If I'm going to fuck up my body for the rest 100%. of my life. Mm-hmm. 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 Like, I need to know that. <laughs> when this little girl comes knocking on the door with her fucking mascara running and shit and her little heart's broken, you, she might be pregnant and all these things that you are not going to punt her down the hill. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> what are we going to do <laughs> together as a team <laughs> to protect this child? You know right. what I'm saying? Like, <clears throat> yeah, and we did. We used to, for fun, we used to sit up here and run scenarios. I used to just... We would run, you know, just like worst case scenario. What are you going to do if? What would happen if? What if I did this? What if I said this? And like, I would always come up with like the worst ones. And he'd be like, dude, <laughs> are you serious right now? I'm like, no, for real. We got in a really bad <laughs> but my pussy still works. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be like, what? I'd be like, You've oh. become a human fleshlight. I lost one butt cheek. It looks kind of weird back there, but it, everything is intact. What's going on? And he was like, no, like, you're still my wife. I'm like, okay, you have to. The other thing is I really like it when you <laughs> lick on the nub. He's like, dude. <laughs> He'd be like, we're not getting married. You're fucking crazy. Leave me alone. <laughs> And then I would get mad mad when he would come up with a way worse one. (laughs) I'd be like, I'm not doing that. No. (laughs) Which is crazy because in those, we used to be at the diner at like two in the morning with these dumbass scenarios. No, for real. (laughs) Was there ever any... That be one of you was just like, absolutely not. No, that's a deal breaker. No, 100. I was like, listen, if there comes a point where you're like, you need me to shit on your chest, I, how much <laughs> money are we talking about? Because <laughs> listen, some of these things involve money. He's like, no, no, we're together. So death do us part. <laughs> I'm like, but why would I be doing that? Right, right. Like we, that, that's not in our vows. Nobody... <laughs> It's not in the contract. And the crazy part is like so many times I knew he was a piece of shit, even though I love him. <laughs> <laughs> or anytime it was <laughs> <laughs> He'd be stressed out. He'd be like, oh I don't know. <laughs> and I'd be like, what are you talking about? I would still love you. I would still love you so much if you had what are you saying? And he's like, I know, but like, I'm still, still cute. Like, I'm like, oh, no, but, <laughs> but I'm oh, not. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. You know, I need you to go ask Chris right now. <laughs> well, hello, we 
you meet again. It's just you and me here at the end of this episode. So thank you for sticking around all the way to the very end. You can find this podcast in a handful of different places on the interwebs. First off, our website, imperfectstrangerspodcast.com. You can listen to the show. You can also buy merch. You can poke around. There's not a heck of a lot there, but it took me a while to build it. So maybe go check it out. (laughs) We have Instagram, imperfectstrangers underscore podcast. We have Twitter at imperfectstrangers. We have Patreon, patreon.com forward slash imperfectstrangers. Three tiers. Check them out. Lots of bonus content. We put a ton of work into that Patreon. So go on over, see if it's for you. We'd love to have you. And last but not least, if you listen to the show on Apple Podcasts, would you kindly go in and leave us a five-star rating and review? We love to get feedback about the show, but only if it's like the kind, nice stuff. (laughs) So if you're feeling generous, go on over there. And uh, we'll be back here on Instagram with a live. So we go live once a week talking about the episodes or whatever seems to happen in that chat. And uh, make sure that you subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts so that you don't miss an episode of Imperfect Strangers. With that, be well, stay safe, wash your hands, and we'll be back next week.